This is a quick test of showing how to use the uh, draw data set plugin in AFNI. So I'm going to start AFNI in a directory where I have some data. So I'll do ls, see I have some data here, and I'll start AFNI. And once I start AFNI, I can get into the draw data set plugin two ways. I can uh, right click over any image, and there I can cl click draw ROI plugin. Or I can do it another way. I could do define data mode, plugins, and then draw data set. This brings up the exact same plugin. So let's do that here. And here we just go through it from top to bottom. So at the top it says no data set. We're going to choose whether we want to copy an existing data set or use the data set as is. So if we're going to use the data set, we won't make a copy of it. We'll just use the data set. And then we have the choice whether we want to zero out the values or use the data. So if you're starting to draw regions from scratch, you would use zero, make everything zero within the, the grid of the, the starting data set. Or if you wanted to change uh, an ROI, ROIs that you've drawn, you can use data and it will just copy the data into it. And we're usually going to show this as an overlay, but you have the choice to, to look at this in the underlay instead. And then the final one here is as is. So this is the data format, whether you want to have it as byte, short, or float. If you're doing uh, 255 regions or fewer, then you probably would pick byte to save space. If you're doing more, you would pick short. Uh, probably won't use float and as is means take the, the same data format as the data set that you choose to start with. So I'm going to choose byte here. And then I choose a data set for copying. Now here it gives me a choice of data sets. The data sets are all the ones that have the same grid as my underlay data set, so the one that's showing here. If I want to choose a different underlay, I would choose that here and then go back to the plugin. Okay, so here let's start with our a NAT plus a ridge, the same one that we're, we're showing here. And we just pick something that has that grid. Okay, and you'll see that our color scale changed over here. Okay, so, so now we have the uh, data set plugin menu here. And the first thing we to choose is how we draw. Uh, what value we're going to draw into our data set. So we can choose, we'll probably choose an integer. Uh, so the first value that comes up is, is one, and we can keep that for now. And we'll give it a label. So this will be some ROI, and I'll just call it ROI1. Now you can choose what uh, color to use for your, your drawing pence, pencil or pen. Uh, here, it, it's not the the color that will be kept by the color scale, but while we're drawing, we can choose to color with a particular color. And then we have the uh, filled curve uh, mode as our default mode. You can choose among a lot of different choices here. Um, let me go back to the filled curve just to show you what, what that does. And um, let's start to draw. So when we go over to any of our, our slice viewers, we can, we can draw on top of that, and we can choose either to use the, uh, the pen, uh, where we can draw with a left button, or we can choose to, uh, to use a, a mouse and use the middle, middle mouse button. Um, since I'm doing this on a, a laptop, I will use pen here, because uh, it's easier to draw with the left mouse button. Okay, so here, so I've got pen selected, and I'll just try to draw, you know, something. And I'm uh, that I was just dragging the left mouse button around, and you'll see that the color changed. It's not yellow. It's not red. The first color on the that color scale. And uh, I can uh, do some other. I can change to another ROI and draw another ROI here. ROI 2. And uh, here I'll try a different method. I'll, I'll choose uh, 2D circle for now. 
Okay, here I'm going to draw with a 2D circle, just a circle through, through space. You'll see there, there's my 2D circle being dragged around. So these circles are four millimeter wide radius. Okay. Um, and if I go to another slice down here, you'll see that I was only drawing on on the one slice. And if I go through, I can see that it, it's only on the one slice. If I want to draw in three dimensions, I can use a uh, sphere instead. Or I can do this repeatedly on every single slice. Um, but a quick way to draw in three dimensions is with a sphere. So now I'm going to use a four millimeter radius sphere. So I find this, this is a very useful way to draw in 3D. Um, so I can, I can fill things in in 3D. Okay, so now I've, I've drawn in 3D. And now if I go through the slices, you'll see it's on, on multiple slices. As I go away, it's, it's, uh, it's less filled in. But well, let's say I didn't like something that I did. Let's say I didn't like that last last region. I can undo it down here with the undo button, and I can keep undoing things as I go. Undo, undo, and so that un undoes all those those steps, and I can redo it if I want to bring those back. Um, we can uh, uh, if if we want to erase, we use the value of zero. So let me just change this to to the value of zero. I can go down, or I can type in zero here, and here I can un, I can erase with a sphere or any anything else. But I'm going to use points, and you'll see what that that does. Points. This is uh, so you may want to take the edges of your region and just clean them up a bit, and so you can do that with points. So. See, there's there's points. So I'm putting in zeros at every every one of those points. Maybe useful to uh, zoom in on that uh, when you're drawing. And I'm going to pan around, but to pan we have a uh, we have to turn pen off to pan. And we can zoom in some more. Okay, so. I'll turn the pan off and pen back on. And I can tweak these a little bit more. Okay, so those are some examples. Uh, we have this, I'll just go through some of these a bit more. Uh, linear fill-in is if you want don't want to draw on every slice, you can draw only on some of the slices, like every fourth slice or every fifth slice, or here it's defaults to every sixth slice, and uh, so the gap is six slices big, so, so between the six slices, and it will look at the overlap between these uh, regions that, uh, that you've drawn every sixth, every sixth slice. Okay, so I'm going back to this. All right, so first thing I want to do is change the value to back away from zero to something else. If I go back through the regions, I can have a new region. I'll call this one ROI3 again. And um, let's see, I won't use the points, but I'll go down from here and I'll choose the atlas. So you can choose any atlas that's in your AFNI distribution. And if you click here, you'll see that it shows you the atlases that are in the default list. Uh, the AFNI Atlas List Environment Variable sets that in your .afni RC file or on the command line. And then it can include uh, things like the D99 Atlas or the NAH Marmoset Atlases, uh, anything like that. Um, so we can include things there and uh, we can choose a region. 
if you click on this, most atlases have a lot of different regions, and they'll show a list that's that's a little bit long and awkward to work through. Uh, you can use this trick of uh, where AFNI shows lists to to right click, right click, just to the left of that button, and so we can do things like choose uh, whatever region you like. We'll choose the uh, left hippocampus here, and uh, then we choose where well. well this is only defined for the left, but you could have a hippocampus defined for either side uh, if it's just called hippocampus, and we'll, we'll try to decide which side to put it. Um, then you select load, and you want to either overwrite it or infill it. Overwrite means replace the voxels uh, that are set already, and infill means don't replace any non-zero voxels. So if you've already drawn regions in part of the hippocampus, it won't replace those. It will just fill in the rest of them. I'll do a load overwrite here. And here it tells me 1471 atlas voxels were drawn into this data set. And you can see over here that we have, this is the uh, Talarac demons left hippocampus. Okay, so once once you're uh, satisfied with all your regions, you can select to save your your data set, and so this is my my uh, my ROIs, and then select set, and it will save that. And if you do any more changes, then you can just select save, uh, and then it will save them into that same named data set. And uh, once you're finally finished, you can click Done. If you don't want to keep your results, you can just click Quit. So that's how you use the Draw Data Set. Oh, one, one other thing. If you're going to go back into drawing this some more, you, you will uh, go in and choose that same data set. And you can either copy it to, to, uh, to prevent doing anything to your previous version of it, or you can select don't copy it and just use the data as is. So here you would choose the data if you want to modify those regions. Uh, when you when you're drawing you should be able to click on particular regions and get names. Uh, this one yeah this is showing up here as ROI3 and then when you're finally finished, you can even convert these to atlases with at atlas size, and then they'll be available for where am I. Okay, so that's that's it for a quick overview of uh, ROI drawing in AFNI. And uh, maybe we'll have some more videos. Thanks.